Now that we know how the brain bee works, let's start preparing for the brain bee. We'll start with the brain basics. This is from the Brain Facts book, Chapter 1. Here I have a picture of the couple of brains in this world, and the human brain is certainly not the largest brain of all the animals. The human brain is probably the most evolved and complex brain out of all the animals in the previous slide. Our brain is certainly not the biggest out of all the animals, then what makes it so special? The answer to that question lies in the brain's complex structure. So let's get into the anatomy of the brain. I know that this might be a review to a couple of you who had Mrs. Boots in 8th grade, and this might be completely new to the rest of you. So let's start. The cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It contains the parts of the brain that are important for executive function, like making decisions, what to eat for lunch, memory, remembering what to write on the AP Psychology test, and perceiving the world around you, seeing your friends. The cerebrum contains of four lobes. The frontal lobe, which is in the red right here, is important for thinking, planning, and organizing. The parietal lobe is important for attention, language, and senses. The occipital lobe for vision and color, and the temporal lobe for language and memory. The next important part of the brain is the corpus callosum. The cerebrum is divided into two, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The left hemisphere controls the right part of your body and the right hemisphere controls the left part of your body. The corpus callosum is a bundle of nerve fibers that acts as a bridge between the two hemispheres. It enables your cerebral hemispheres to communicate with each other. Next is the cerebellum. The cerebellum is split up into two hemispheres as well. It coordinates the voluntary movements such as waving your hand. It helps you learn movements as well, like skating and rock climbing. The thing with the cerebellum is that even though it's split up into two parts, the right hemisphere controls the right part of your body, and the left hemisphere controls the left part of your body. Up next is the midbrain. The midbrain contains two small hills called the colliculi. The superior colliculi right here are important for vision. The inferior colliculi right here are important for hearing. Next is the hindbrain. The hindbrain contains the medulla oblongata and the pons, which is important for breathing, heart rhythm, and blood, glu blood glucose level. Yeah. Now that we know the basic parts of the brain, let's get into the communication inside the brain. Neurons. Neurons are the basic unit of the nervous system, and they're messengers of the nervous system. Can you guess how many neurons are in the brain? The answer is 86 billion neurons. Myth. It was considered before that there were 100 billion neurons, but the origin of this number is not known, and people believe this for years. <laughs> The neuron structure. So here I have a picture of a neuron and let's start with the dendrites. The dendrites are these little branches that extend outside of the cell body. They help collect information from other neurons axons, which we'll learn about in just a second. The cell body contains the cell's nucleus, which of course contains the neuron's DNA. The cell body is also known as the soma. Extending from the cell body is the axon and the axon terminal. 
The axon is covered with these white sheets called the myelin sheets. They help the electrical signals to transmit faster and pass the information along faster. And at the end of the axons, we can see axon terminals, which send the information to the next neuron's dendrites. Neurons have two methods of communicating, electrically and chemically. For neurons to pass the info down the axon, the info will be in electrical signals called action potentials. The action potentials are generated like in this GIF. You can see this once, I share, once you open the, your shared slideshow. Chemical communications. The electrical signals that ended at the axon terminal cannot cross the gap between the neurons to pass the torch. So they use neurotransmitters. These chemical messengers bind to receptors in the next neuron's dendrites and pass along the info. This, you can see it on your shared slides as well. Synapses. Synapses are the junction points where two neurons communicate. They have a dendrite of one neuron and an axon of another neuron. And that is it for today. There are more information in the Brain Facts book, Chapter 1. Look through the chapter and let me know if you have any questions. And thank you for tuning in today and check out the awareness video that should also be posted along with the Brain Facts video. Thank you and have a great day.